What is going on guys, Steve with the video for you today. So today's gonna be a PC video and got a lot of goodies here, so let's just cut right, right into it. Here is Adonis Diamond King's Cal Ripken Jr. autograph card. Right there you can see the autograph in black. Really like this card. Um, one of my top, probably five favorite autograph cards in my collection. You know, Ripken, nicknamed the Iron Man and uh, Hall of Famer. To me, one of the greatest players of all time but that's kind of being biased. I've always been a huge Cal Ripken Jr. fan. But nonetheless, I'm really glad to have this Cal Ripken Jr. in my collection. So there is his autograph. Shooting right along to the 1952 tops of Gus Bell. So Gus Bell had a 281 career batting average, 206 home runs, 942 RBIs, a four-time All-Star, and he's actually in the Cincinnati Reds Hall of Fame. And he is the father of Buddy Bell. Buddy Bell's kind of, you know, known as being a manager too, but pretty good player himself. So there is the 1952 Tops of Gus Bell. Here we got another one of my favorite cards. Here is the 1956 Tops Ted Williams card. Ted Williams, uh, you know, you could debate him, or Pete Rose is one of the greatest hitters of all time. I think Ted Williams has the better overall stats, but, you know, there's something about Pete Rose, too. But uh, anyways, about Ted Williams, he had a 344 career batting average, 2,654 hits, 521 home runs, 1,839 RBIs, a 19-time All-Star, a two-time MVP, a two-time Triple Crown Award winner, and uh, inducted the Hall of Fame in 1966. So there is the 1956 tops Ted Williams. Here we got uh, the 1963 tops Roger Maris. You know, some consider him the single season home run king with 61 home runs that he accomplished in 1961. But, uh, you know, Barry Bonds holds that record currently. And I, I just like the 63 tops of his. It's a pretty clean looking card and nice photography, kind of a portrait photo of him. I'm just happy to have this card in my collection. So there is the 63 Maris. Shooting right along to the 1964 tops of Ernie Bank. So uh, I've said a lot about Ernie Banks throughout the, my time making videos, but one thing I haven't said is uh, he's actually the only Cub, or he was the very first Cub to have his number retired for the Chicago Cubs, which kind of surprises me with, you know, uh, Mordecai Brown and all that. But, yeah, it's kind of a fun fact. I don't know. Maybe they didn't do that up until I'd, I'd have to look more into that of when they started retiring numbers. Here is the 1973 Topps Buddy Bell rookie card. You know, the son of Gus Bell. Uh, Buddy Bell was he was a pretty good player himself. He had a he was a five time All Star, a six time Gold Glove Award winner too. And I think I didn't look this up, but I think he's right around maybe twenty five hundred hits, something like that, twenty two. So yeah, there's the seventy three Buddy Bell. Here we got the nineteen seventy four tops Johnny Bench. You know Johnny Bench considered one of the greatest catchers of all time, a fourteen time All Star, a two time National League MVP a 10-time Gold Glove Award winner, and inducted the Hall of Fame in 1989. So there's a 74 bench. Here's one of my favorite players, too. I mean, I like a lot of guys. So here's the 1982 Topps All-Star George Brett. You know, uh, I consider him one of the greatest third basemen of all time. But that's kind of, you know, growing up in Nebraska. There's a lot of Kansas City fans up here. So you just kind of grow to love George Brett. Here's an interesting case, too. Here is Jerry Kuzman. Here's the 1982 Tops. And, uh, you know, he's on that rookie card with Nolan Ryan, the 1968 Tops card. Which is too bad because he's a pretty decent player himself. He had 222 career wins, a 3.36 ERA, over 2,500 strikeouts, a two-time All-Star. And this is kind of a shocking stat to me when I looked him up. He only had um, not even 1% vote, and he got knocked off the ballot for Hall of Fame his first year of eligibility. So that's a little shocking to me, but there's the 82 Jerry Kuzman. Here we got the 1996 star rookies card of uh, Darren Erstad. You know, being from Nebraska and currently living there, he's he's a big-time fan favorite around here, playing for their football team and baseball team. 
And uh, he was a two-time All-Star, a three-time Gold Glove Award winner. And, you know, you watch a guy play with energy. This guy was just, just as intense as Bryce Harper. I don't think he was as athletic and as good of a player, but that guy could hustle. Here we got the 1997 rave review of Tony Gwynn. Uh, one of my favorite players, again, as a kid watching, you know, just a pure hitter. And uh, I always liked listening to when he commentated Sunday Night Baseball shortly after he retired. Here we got the 2002 Donruss Rookie Crusade card of Cliff Lee. And these are kind of hard cards to come by. So, uh, see, it's numbered out at 1500. I just really like this card. I like Cliff Lee a lot. I wish, you know, injuries kind of derailed his career there and he could have been a little bit more than what he was, but he was a solid left-handed thrower and had a nasty curveball. Here we got the 2006 Topps Heritage rookie card of Nick Markakis. And uh, something fun with Nick Markakis is that he actually holds the Major League Baseball outfield record without an error of 398 games. I did not know that. This is, I think, a short print, too. Yeah, it's now read in 1952. This is the 2014 Topps Finest Mashahiro Tanaka card, rookie card. He was a two-time All-Star and long-time pitcher with the Yankees. I think he's a free agent this year, though. Just a couple more cards left. Here's the 15, 2015 Topps Chrome Sepia Refractor of Chris Bryant. Love Chris Bryant, one of my favorite Cub players of all times. I'd put him probably a second close to Ryan Sandberg, but again, I don't think he's going to be on the team much longer. Here is the 2018 Topps Living cart of Austin Meadows. Uh, you know, Austin Meadows still has a lot of life behind him at age 25. But there's his rookie card. And we will end it with the 2018 Legends in the Making Walker Bueller. Uh, you know, age 26 for a pitcher and... He's been pretty solid so far, so appreciate you guys watching, and take care, everybody. Thanks again.